you will need a fuel engine generator a crankshaft two cylinders two injectors a couple of exhaust pieces Hello, welcome to my new look tutorials. Today I'm going to be redoing my fuel engine tutorial. Um, I have created a boat just for this occasion. I've bleh, named it Wooden Willy. It's a basic boat. Um, for the purpose of the tutorial, it doesn't need to be large. So uh, once you've got your base boat, then you can start building your fuel engines. So the first thing we're going to get introduced at the start is the fuel engine generator. Now note that there is a green pointer sticking out from this engine. This is usable um, where you can place your uh, attachments. Any other point on it does not have a green thingy so you can't attach things to it. So the fuel engine, I will rotate so you can see, has a green square which means that has to be attached to a full size surface. If it's not then it goes blue and you won't actually have the option to attach it. Likewise, interestingly, they haven't marked it but you can also do this if you attach to the back of the engine, not the front. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is place it in the middle of the boat at the back. Uh, the reason I'm choosing the middle is for balance purposes. So you, you generally would like to try and keep your vehicles as balanced as possible. Centre of mass as near to the centre of the vehicle as possible. Now the weight of this engine shouldn't be a major issue. Um, it, it doesn't really make a huge difference against my lead block keel. So the next thing we're going to attach, which at the start was mentioned, is a crankshaft. So looking at the crankshaft, we can see, so I'm going to put it into uh, block build mode here, that we have attachment points all around. We have four pointy bits and two flat straight bits. The flat straight bits are the direct shaft. The direct shaft has to link to either another crankshaft, a fuel engine, a cylinder, and I have a funny feeling you can do adapt to, but I'm not going to test that now. So I'm only going to be using one, and I'm going to place it directly next to the fuel engine for this tutorial. There we go. So we have now got our crankshaft attached to our fuel engine. At the moment, this vehicle has no power. The next thing we're going to attach is two cylinders two cylinders are going to go on opposite sides of the crankshaft. The reason for this is that although we could place it at any point we can access piping easier from the sides than we can from let's say the front. The top we could add a third cylinder to but on this particular occasion I'm going to leave it empty. So there's one and there's the other. Note that the block itself let's just get it into the air so we can see it again has uh, a wide cone funnel at the bottom this is the attachment side this is where it has to attach to a crankshaft or an adapter or directly to the fuel engine the other attachment points are all pointy every single one which means you can attach anything to them that's allowed to attach to a cylinder uh, for example pipes uh, injectors, um, turbos, uh, or even turbo uh, the carburetor. Sorry. The next thing we're going to need is two injectors. So again, we can see that this has two inputs, but it actually has no outputs, which means that you can attach up to two cylinders to one injector for efficiency. So, for example, if I placed a cylinder on top of the crankshaft, 
I could effectively give the injector uh, on both sides of that cylinder two connection points. Each injector gives you 100 engine power. Now before I attach this the reason we have no engine power at the moment is because we have no fuel. I'm going to make sure there is fuel on this vehicle. You can get this from the resources section under fuel storage. For the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to pick the smallest fuel st storage. I'm going to place two on here, one on either side of the boat. We can now see we have a power of 20 down the bottom right hand corner. Each cylinder provides 10 power. Going back to our injector, or two injectors as the case may be. As you can see, adding one provides an additional 200, oh sorry I got that wrong earlier for saying 100, 200 power. So we can now get 400 power, so it multiplies the cylinder's output by 20, by attaching these two injectors. This is by far not efficient, this particular setup, but this is a demonstration. The next piece we are going to require is the exhaust. Now for the purposes of this demonstration I'm o I am going to show you the basic exhaust setup. Exhausts have to be attached initially to a cylinder. So on this particular occasion I'm going to just stick it on the top of each cylinder. Note that both ends can be pl plugged in it doesn't matter which side goes in, but for some reason I feel it looks better this way around. The reason we put exhausts in is because cylinders will overheat much more rapidly without them. This is the basic fuel engine which uses injectors only and provides 400 power which is actually not too bad for efficiency as long as you don't overload it. Going back to the injector, the description states that it can be placed on any side of a cylinder, which I've covered. Uh, it's an alternative to carburetors and forced induction, which is correct. The documentation uh, states, where is it? Injector. Injectors provide a lot of fuel power to the attached cylinder but is relative fuel, relatively fuel inefficient. So if you want to use a lot of fuel for an amount of power, it's a great way to go. I hope this has been useful and I hope you have found that this will help you create your own engines from scratch. I'm going to leave you with a quick recabling, re rewiring, repiping of the uh, exhausts. Give me just a moment while I do that for you so you can see how pipes can also look. As you can see, you can link pipes together and put them out into a single exhaust. What this means is that if you wish to try to reduce the amount of holes required in your vehicle to vent your exhausts, then you do not need to worry about piping out loads. You only need to worry about piping out one. A pipe can go through um, a piece of hull. I will demonstrate this 
in a slightly different way to this because that won't work. Right, okay. So here is our hull, and say so we want to go through it. So what we can do is clear this piece down. Put a beam in at the bottom. Add a wooden block at the top. We now have our hole. If I point my piping that way, obviously this would not look good with a standard exhaust, as can be seen here. Although the hole is technically blocked up, it doesn't look good. There is a part called the hull pipe, which is perfect for this particular job. This can be used anywhere, and this serves the same purpose as a standard exhaust. And as you can see, you can pump it out at any point. One thing to note that is, if you have your exhausts pumping out into an enclosed room, you will not get reduced cooling. You can pump out the exhaust underwater and you will get reduced cooling. You can pump out the side, you can pump out the top, just as long as it exits the internal chambers of your vehicle, you will get the reduced cooling bonus from the exhaust. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. I know I've already finished it off partly further back and I hope this engine is useful for a basic design for you. Um, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you like. Thank you very much for watching.